in response to something Kyle was saying, I was going to say that it's funny that we can... It's something you were saying also, but it's funny that we have thought of comic books as like a motivator for or a medium for experimentation and trying to push some kind of agenda where whereas now if it's actually not that true anymore i think like like the x men were once or are still kind of like a metaphor for racial like uh, tension and for basically any kind of like people who are oppressed because of some quality that they have. So, you know what I mean. I, I do, but I actually disagree. Well, I think Nor North Star was actually married, so he was he's gay and he was married to his boyfriend in, like, what, 2010, 2011, something like that. It was only a couple of years, but, wait, it's 2014 now. Jeez. Anyway, like, a couple of years ago, he got married, and it was mainstream press, front page of, you know, CNN or whatever, right? It's... I think maybe it's not pushing boundaries in terms of new ideas or new political movements, but I think it's bringing mainstream attention back to issues that need to be discussed. Like if you look at all the um, sort of U.S. states now that are legalizing gay marriage, um, that all began, and I'm certainly not giving credit to you know this Marvel comic that pushed the entire United States in this direction, but like it, all these conversations were happening, and you know that was part of the mix. That was part of the conversation was this comic book that had a, on the cover uh, a gay marriage, you know, and and kudos to Marvel for you know not shying away from a topic, but I mean it kind of goes to the point like. Um, regardless of you know gender and race and, and and sexual orientation and the whole bit, they're not shying away. And I think it's important that this medium, which also reaches younger generations, is, is out there and is being consumed and 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 starting those conversations. Well, I'm not saying that it's not prominent anymore so much as that it's less subversive. Like it like. Like using the X Men as a metaphor is more like subversive, and you can actually, like, you trick children into having liberal values by giving them examples of characters they care about who are going through the same kinds of things, blah blah blah. But then if you slap them in the face with a gay marriage, that's just saying here is gay marriage. This is a thing, in our. I don't want to say slap them in the face because that sounds cruel, but I did already, so I'm sorry. But it's if it's so obvious like if it's so prominent it becomes less able in my opinion to to change minds it's more like taking a stance rather yeah, than it's become mine it's become more of a political thing rather than um a cultural change essentially um and that a lot of the things I see in comic books when they do any of these changes, it's less of a uh, cultural shift and more of a political motivation to do this because it's not necessarily the new PC thing to do, but it's um, the new PC thing to do. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. No, nope, not really. <laughs> All right. That does make me wonder, though. You know, are, are comics... Pushing these ideas, are they on the forefront of you know getting these ideas out there, or are they just reflecting ideas that are already in the mainstream and they're just kind of catching up, you know, late? Like, oh, we forgot we should mention gay marriage. You know, are they pushing the idea, or are they just kind of once it's out there, you then tackling the idea? I, w I would definitely say it's the latter, and I would also say that um, partially because of the, the the culture of the creative talent, we'll say, the writers and the artists and whatnot, and their location, New York and m more recently L.A., I would say that the values tend to be a little more liberal. So you get, you know, the, the culture of the creators plus the physical location of, you know, the studios and, and, and whatnot, and I think liberal is what it's going to tend towards in terms of political shift. Um, whether you disagree or agree with that, obviously, uh, you know, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think it's largely they're echoing they're echoing things. I don't think they're actually pushing it because obviously there's been you know talk of gay marriage for 20 years before uh, the first comic book mentioned it and and things like that. At least mainstream comic book indie comics are a different story, of course. Well, we talk about like the 
the hard traveling heroes Green Lantern Green Arrow story as being one of those first like comics that really pushed the edge like uh, having Speedy do heroin and having eventually John Stewart the first black Green Lantern take take on the role instead of the white dude and show him that there's a whole other world out there that wasn't being I mean, that's basically what happens in the very first issue is that Hal Jordan learns that there is this whole other world of tenement housing and injust social injustice that he was not aware of. And then by by uh, osmosis, I guess, but the readers learn the same thing. And at that time, I think that was really... It wasn't preaching to the choir then. I think it's still not preaching to the choir necessarily when a writer inserts some liberal political statement into their writing now because there is still a vast, like, 20,000 readers, more than 20,000 copies of each comic book sold. Not all 20,000 of those people are going to be liberal necessarily or political. What the hell is that sound? <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> wow. Technical challenges killed your point. I blame Kyle. Kyle, it's probably your mic. I think it oh. was mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. All right. So, what haven't we talked about? We haven't talked about Earth Eleven. I don't really know too much about Earth Eleven. Like, I know it was like mid two thousands or whatever. Was that wasn't around very long? What kind of hap? What went down there? That was part of Superman Batman, I think. I think that was the first appearance of that. Um, they just... Jeff Loeb was writing this really wacky kind of universe-hopping story in Superman Batman, and they ended up on this world where women were all of the superheroes and men were the female versions. You know what I mean? Swap yeah. swaps. Everybody yeah. was swapped. But... Because that's not a mainstream universe, you don't really hear much more about it, except in multiverse stories, which is rare. Sorry, excuse me. Rare to see. You don't see much of it. There you go. So you're saying we don't see much of it, then? Is that what you're pointing to? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. You know, actually, one thing, one uh, specific character that I... I'm surprised none of us actually brought up. I made a note of it to to bring it up, but I just I didn't for whatever reason. Nick Fury, um, you know the Ultimates version, and ultimately uh, Samuel Jackson's rendition, which you know chicken egg, which came first uh, type situation, but um, super popular, like just ridiculously popular. When uh, you know there was a bit of a fallout. No, I don't want to call it fallout, but a, a sort of a, a commentary between um, uh, the Hasselhoff. And uh, you know Samuel Samuel Jackson, as you know, uh, Hasselhoff played him in a like TV limited series or whatever back in the what was that like 1920s or something? I don't know. He's really old. Anyway, um, but the new Samuel L. Jackson version was like extremely popular, and I like you know I think he did a fantastic job in what he's been in, like seven movies now. So that's a flip side of this coin is you know what sometimes the flip is actually somehow better and or a different in a po very positive way and well received I mean it doesn't hurt that it's Samuel L. Jackson Samuel L. Jackson was huge in popular culture and the just the fact that he was drawn as uh, like a Samuel L. Jackson lookalike in the Ultimates comic books kind of like just spurred that whole motion on and if it wasn't for that situation I don't think we would have ever have seen um, uh, the Samuel L. Fury, because, I mean, if it had just been a black man as uh, Nick Fury, it, I don't think it would have gone as far as it did. I think the fact that the character resembled him so very much that it just, like, pushed that to where it is now. It lends its... Um credibility, even though that's a weird way to gain credibility, but it's like you said, Samuel L. Jackson is Samuel L. Jackson, and we all know who he plays the same guy in every single movie. So when you read Samuel L. Jackson, or when you see, read a comic 
with a guy who looks like Samuel L. Jackson, you read his voice as Samuel L. Jackson. So they've basically turned Nick Fury into Samuel L. Jackson, which is fine because everybody likes him. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing that. Nope. Awkward silence. <laughs> Why is no one talking about Miles Morales? What a kid. That kid who's Miles. Miles Morales. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like him. I did not like the fact that they killed off the Ultimate Spider-Man, and I pretty much stopped reading the Ultimate comics after that. I mean, uh, the what was the storyline called? Um, it's like Extinction or Ultimate, Ultimatum? Whatever it was. Very good storyline. Kill off Spider-Man. I'm done. So you didn't read Superior Spider-Man, then I take it? No. Yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> Is that all you have to say about that? No. 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 It's over now, anyway. We're back with uh, Peter Parker and the... Uh... But so, they so. got you. They tricked you. They trapped you. Like, that's exactly the problem, where it's like... They kill off the guy you like, they replace him with someone new. You get outraged and drop the book, and then you never really get the opportunity to appreciate how, I don't know, good Miles is as a character. If he is good, I have never read Miles or Alice, but if he's good, he's good. That's the trap. you got to have more, like, you got to give him a chance. Why won't you give Miles a chance, Mike? I feel like that's the same situation as Jaime Reyes, you know, the Blue Beetle. They Jaime. Killed Jaime? Jaime? I'm not... Jaime. Yeah, it's, Jaime. Jaime. It's, it's the same idea, you know, they kill Blue Beetle, who actually hadn't really done much besides, like, one issue of coolness in, like, 15 years. And everyone, everyone's crazy, they're upset, they love Blue Beetle. They bring him back as this Hispanic teenager, and... Uh, it's actually pretty well received, but no one read it, and it got canceled twice. So you you missed out. You fell for the trap or didn't fall for the trap or whatever the case is, and you missed out on it. That's true. I, I don't want to generalize too much, but I have a theory that the people who get the most outraged by this stuff are actually, like, 50-year-old dudes who were reading, like, Justice League International and really loved Blue Be really loved the Blue Beetle Booster Gold dynamic. And then when he dies and gets replaced by some uh, Hispanic kid, they freak out because clearly old men are racist, and I'm a horrible person for saying that. <laughs> but, well, it's not it's not just that they change the character, but they change like Blue Beetle. Yes. Like, they changed everything about it. And I think that was my problem with that switch, was that I liked the way it was initially, and the way that you changed it, you made it weird and awkward, and I didn't like it. I think people get, off get, your lawn. I yeah. think people get mad because it's like a missed opportunity to have the Blue Beetle that they remember back. Like, you, you're bringing Blue Beetle back, but it's the wrong Blue Beetle! Ah! Or... It's the wrong Spider-Man, or, you know, it's just they're not happy that the opportunity to have the thing that they wish was still there that they haven't had for 25 years was back, is gone. That's what back issues are for. Yeah. <laughs> Go read old comics, you <laughs> sad old people. <laughs> I will, you young whippersnapper. One yeah. day I'll be a 50-year-old man still reading comics and think I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, unless there's anything else to say, I think we can uh, probably wrap it right there. What do you guys say? Wrap it. Wrap it up. Before I say anything else that was stupid, I thought all you guys were going to say stupid things, and then only I said stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sweet, sweet irony. <laughs>